Dobra day. Strabate. And welcome back to our little Bulgarian adventure. Well, what a week. It's been hot. It's been really hot. Um, Over 30 degrees every day. Yeah. Until today. It's actually got a bit cool. It's cool. We, we should be outside. It's, we've got a grey day, which is uh, <laughs> quite a novelty at the moment. They're threatening incoming storms. So we're yes. not quite they sure. reckon they're coming later. And they say they could be quite vicious. So we'll let you know next week what happens. Yeah. <laughs> we have been having thunderstorms most evenings this week, but yeah. we've got away really lightly. We've been on the edge of them each time, which is quite handy, really. <laughs> <laughs> we did have hailstones we that did. were quite large, but yeah. not as large. I mean, they're the size of golf balls in some places. I think it's the first time we've had hail. First time for a yeah. few years, yeah. And hail uh, like that. We heard them, because <laughs> our big barn has got a metal roof, and I could hear this clanging noise. I thought, what on earth is that? And it suddenly dawned. As one just missed me. Hail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very loud. Hmm. But uh, yeah, so that's that's been our weather week. Um, but because it's been so hot during the day, we've been getting up early. Um, get stuff done. <laughs> um, I've been getting up at half five, six o'clock. It's oof. yeah. Adam's routine is broken. It's like I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, been doing some more strenuous work. We've left the uh, concrete pad that we poured last week to set up um, before we do anything with it, just to make sure it's properly hardened. So I started the groundwork at the back of the house, and me being me, I've been videoing everything. Now we've had a technical issue this week, again. <laughs> um, I put everything, all the footage I'd shot to a certain point on the computer, and now the computer won't turn on, so I can't get hold of it. Um, so we're gonna show you what we can, Bear with us, normal service hopefully will be resumed next week, but this is what I've been doing around the back of the house. This is the area we're working on this week. Now we've lost the first couple of days work footage um, due to a technical problem, but these pictures are here just to show you how we started or how the land was before we started. And you can see the progress we've made so far. So that's that area cleared of rubble and undergrowth it's uh you can see the slope on the picture there that we've got to deal with but that's our secondary concern at the moment our first thing to do is sort out the stumps this is just one of the stumps this is the one that had the ants coming out of it the other day now uh we're not we don't think we need to dig them out completely this is the highest of them so this might be have to go a little bit deeper but most of the stump is dead we think we need to just dig down a little bit cut them off and cover them over now strictly speaking we should remove them but we're going to be putting quite a thick pad of concrete on top of it which has to last well as far as I'm concerned 25 years if after 25 years it starts to break up because something's growing well I won't be redoing it so I won't have to worry too much but, uh, so basically we're doing more stump reduction and stump removal Better crack on with that now. I'm going to get Max to help me because I think we need the big guns on this one. And that's what's left of that stump or set of stumps. Now we've taken it down to a good 
six inches below where the level of the ground is going to be. So we think that's probably enough. So what we'll do now is we'll cover that one in, move on to the next one. You saw us trying lots of different techniques. We're going to see which one works best. I think it's dig around it, chainsaw it out, then hack at it with an axe. But uh, we'll find out in the next one. Well, that's all the stumps taken care of. And I'm now in the process of bringing that pile of rubble at the back down over the to the front to level it off. We're going to need to get some more gravel and stuff uh, brought in to help level up this area. But we've uh, tackled the well, we've tackled the first part of the groundworks. Now we've got to move on to the next bit. So level that gravel out as far as we can, order some more, and then move on to the next step. We've also been out and about a bit this week. We went to Hitrino Market with Max we on Saturday. Uh, we did take footage. Not that, it, lost. that's gone. <laughs> on the computer that won't start. So we'll have to go again and uh, <laughs> take more footage. <laughs> but we did get cream. We did. And saw the ducks. Yeah, and saw more ducks. So, All good. We didn't speedy ducks. Don't <laughs> do donkey, don't do ducks. And we've also got around to paying our local taxes, which we're always late paying every year, just simply because we forget about them and then yeah. suddenly panic and remember them. But yes, popped into the Targa Vishti. Um, seamless this year. I told them I wanted to pay the taxes, gave them a the piece of paper. In Bulgarian. I did. Yes. Uh, five minutes later, I was 228 lev poorer. <laughs> but our council tax and car tax have been paid. Yeah, so our... Car, our car tax, for, it's our local car it tax. It is, yeah. So you pay a national vignette every year, that's probably about 80... 81 or... lev, something like that, or 87 lev, I think it might be. Yeah, which is the equivalent, if you half, you can roughly half it, so £40, yeah. pounds, and then you pay a local car tax. Yes, which and is I based see. on the emissions of your car, all that sort of thing. Mine being quite an old diesel, cost me a little bit more. Yeah, it's 160 lev near enough. Near enough, yeah. And um, our... Council tax, as it will be in the UK, or our buildings, property tax and rubbish charges, came to a total of just under 60 lev. Yeah, 46 for the year. pounds for the local tax. And lev. 46 lev, so 23 <laughs> pounds. Yeah. And 22 lev for rubbish collection, yes. which is about 11 pounds. So that's for annually. You only pay that once a year, so um, vastly different to the UK. Oh yes. But we're paid, we're up to date, we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> And it was actually four Stutonkis cheaper overall than last year, but yeah. I think that's because we did manage to get there earlier this year, so we paid a bit. little bit less interest. <laughs> Next year I'm going to get there probably in March and see what happens. Yeah. It might be about 30 quid, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'll be that cheap. No, I but know. But yeah. But... <laughs> uh, yeah, so all in all we saved two pence. Yeah. By remembering it in June instead of July. Well done us. <laughs> so last week you saw me starting the process for pickling walnuts, as I said, my mum and my auntie Irene both really like them. We don't know, but we'll find out. <laughs> um, this week, they've been brining all week um, down in the cellar. Um, part two of the process is here. It's been a week since we started the walnuts. They're in the brine where they've been agitated every other day just to make sure that the ones at the bottom come to the top, the ones at the top go to the bottom, so they'll get properly brined. Let's see how they're looking and move on to the next step. So here they are. You can see the water's gone completely black. Um, you can just about see the walnuts in the surface there. There's a bit of film on top, which um, I don't know what that's from. But what we're going to do is rinse them off, mix up a fresh batch of brine and put them into brine again for another week. The brine is made up with just normal table salt mix in with water. Now we've got 700 millilitres of water and 115 grams of salt. That just gets put in there and give it a stir until it's all mixed in and dissolved. I won't show you all of this because it might take a while. Our first job is to empty the walnuts and the brine into a colander. Give that a quick sluice around. And now, let's give the walnuts a quick rinse. And 
they can now go back into the jug. And then we pour the new brine over all the walnuts. We'll just move them around as best we can. Try and get them all submerged. I may need to make up a little bit more brine here. Um, I did last time and I forgot. But yes, make sure they're all properly covered. And once they're properly covered, put the cover back on, put them down in the cellar and leave them for another week, agitating every other day. You can see there's some colour already being picked up in the brine um, out of the walnuts. That's quite interesting. We'll see how that looks next week. But uh, next week we'll be pickling and putting them in jars. So sticking with the food and drink theme, we're also going to just test our elderflower champagnes that we made. This one's the elderflower. It smells elderflower and lemon, which is understandable because that's what's in it. It's quite dry. What do you think? It's lovely. I really like it. A pleasant fizz. Oh, very good. Let's put that one down. <laughs> I had tried that one earlier, so I knew that one was okay. This one we've not tried before. This no, is this... the elderflower and strawberry. <laughs> Watch our faces carefully. <laughs> oh, you can taste the strawberry in that and the elderflower. Yeah, again, nicely dry, not too dry. Well, there goes this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a bit early to be starting, but we're not, we've started. So, so we'll finish. finish. Hmm. <laughs> yes, we don't normally really start drinking anywhere near the church. Should I put that down for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. We were both a success. Excellent. With those. And if you've been following along and doing it yourself, enjoy. Yeah, and I hope yours turned out as well. Yeah, lovely. We've got another three or four bottles of each of that, so. That should keep us going for a while. For a little while, yes. <laughs> so I think that's about it for us this week. I think so. You're fully up to date. Um, we've got a few bits planned for next week, but we'll bring those to you next week, obviously. Yeah. Um, but until then, it's time for us to say. Stay safe. Be well. Doskoro. Doskoro.